ओम ज्ञान चिमिरंधस्य ज्ञानं चन शलाकय चक्षुर मिलितं येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः थैंक यू टू एवरीवन फॉर काइंडली अटेंडिंग दिस प्रोग्राम थैंक यू स्पेशली टू गदाधा कृष्णा प्रभु एंड टू गोरंग प्रभु फॉर इनलाइटनिंग एवरीवन इन द तेलुगु लैंग्वेज एज यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड I can't I don't speak Telugu. I uh, request your forgiveness and tolerance in this regard. Uh, I'm very happy to see that some of my disciples are surpassing me. I've been asked to speak on Sanatan Dharma Vaishishtya, the specialty of the eternal dharma. Yeah, in the English sentence I just spoke, I didn't translate dharma, I just said dharma. Usually uh, dharma is translated into English with the word religion but actually the concept or, or the understanding of dharma and the understanding of the word religion are something quite different in modern india the understanding of the word dharma has to a large extent become synonymous with the western understanding of religion and therefore we speak of hindu dharma christian dharma muslim dharma jain dharma and so on but to speak of dharma in these terms actually uh, reveals ignorance of the meaning of the word dharma when we speak of sanatan dharma actually the only dharma is sanatan because dharma does not mean religion as the word is commonly construed but dharma means the intrinsic nature that means that it is sanatan it is eternal dharma is the intrinsic nature or characteristic with without which an object is not that object for instance a uh, sugar is sweet if you uh, some or other you could uh, alter the chemical composition of sugar you could make it not sweet but then it wouldn't be sugar anymore or if uh, chilies you could change the the uh, flavor of chili from pungent to sweet but it wouldn't be chili anymore because chili means hot and pungent so uh, the dharma of the jiva is sanatan every jiva is sanatan is eternal न जायते मृयते वा कदा चिन्नायं भूत्वा भविता वा न भूयः अजो नित्यं शाश्वतो यं पुराणो न हन्यते हन्यमाने शरीरे दि जीव ऑर द सोल दि आत्मा डज नॉट कम इन टू बीइंग एट एनी टाइम नॉ कैन इट सीज टू एग्जिस्ट एट एनी टाइम सो द द आत्मा इज इटर्नल and what is the well that is an intrinsic part of the dharma of the jiva is that the jiva is eternal and indestructible and the intrinsic nature of the jiva is to serve bhagavan mamai vangsho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatanaha lord krishna states in bhagavad gita that every jiva is a part and parcel of krishna eternal so it is the eternal characteristic of the jiva to serve krishna so you may say well we see, or we see all the jivas in the material world they're not serving krishna well that's because we're in a perverted position mana shastan indriyani prakriti sthani karshati in this material world we are trying to enjoy the senses but in this way we struggle with the mind and struggle kashtam struggle sangharsh in hindi you say sangharsh so 
the real sanatan dharma of every jiva is to serve Bhagavan. So, uh, the dharma of every jiva is one, therefore there cannot be many dharmas. When we speak of Hindu dharma, Jain dharma, Sikh dharma, and so on, this means that we do not know what dharma is. Christian religion began about 2,000 years ago. And uh, Islam, although it claims uh, connection with uh, an ancient connection, practically it began a little more than a thousand years ago. And Hindu dharma, that also has a beginning. Now that surprise, that may surprise you. you. Maybe you thought I was going to say that Hindu dharma has no beginning. But you won't find the term Hindu dharma. The term Hindu dharma is a modern term. There's no such term Hindu in any Shastra. The, the term Hindu is given by Muslims. So Hindu dharma is less old than Islam. But Sanatan dharma, that the beginning of that cannot be traced out. Generally people think that Sanatan dharma is a synonym for Hindu dharma. But Hindu dharma is a modern term. Sanatan dharma is the intrinsic characteristic of the jiva. So, a sanatan dharma is distinguished from uh, materialistic so-called dharmas. In the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, we find the statement, dharma kaitava projhitatra, that in this Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, cheating so-called dharma is fully rejected. We may say, well, how can dharma be cheating? Dharma is something very good, so how can it be cheating, which is bad? Well, dharma, as it is understood in this world, is something which is somewhat good, you could say. Dharma means to follow various rules, uh, you could say religious rules. But if we become attached to various rituals and rules, without understanding the actual purpose of dharma, then we are cheated and we are cheating ourselves. Generally, uh, dharma is considered the first of the chatur varga. Varga. Dharma, artha, kama and moksha. Okay, you don't need to translate that. But, according to the Srimad Bhagavatam, these four objectives of human life they are simply misleading people. Ar- yeah, dharma means to follow the uh, rules given in Shastra for passing one's life. Artha means economic activities. Kama uh, means uh, sensual enjoyment. In this context, it means sensual enjoyment which is regulated by dharma. And moksha, well, that's in your language, so no need to translate it. So, dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. But the real goal of life, or the, the pancham purushartha, is love of God, love of Krishna. Dharma, consideration of dharma, artha, kama, and moksha are for regulating the lives of the jivas, who are manashashtan indriyani prakriti sthani karsati, who are struggling in this material world, forgetful of their real dharma of service to Krishna. So that is not the real dharma. The actual sanatan dharma of every living being is that he is Satchit ananda. But in this material situation, yeah, we are asat, not eternal. Uh, Asat means not eternal. Achit means we have consciousness, but our consciousness is not clear. Our consciousness is uh, polluted by kam krod lob mohamada matsarya, ityadi. And nirananda, this material world is devoid of bliss. There is some happiness in this material world. 
Just like you see uh, the dog is playing, the young puppies are playing. So that is happiness. But that to the happiness of a dog is not the full bliss which is the uh, characteristic of the liberated soul. Uh, we are not meant for the happiness of a dog. The dog is looking for some, looking in the garbage for something to eat. Would you, as a as a respectful, respectable human being, would you like to look in the garbage for something to eat? It is a horrible situation. The pig is eating stool. It is and is horrible. But in this material world, the respectable person of today can be the pig eating stool tomorrow. So you could say that the 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 dharma of the pig is to eat stool. It is the natural characteristic of the pig to eat stool. The pig naturally likes to eat stool. If you give some nice sweet cooked in ghee, the pig won't like that. If you eat it, then next day it's processed and comes out the other end, then the pig likes it. So the pig, what is the pig? The pig is actually a jiva who's supposed to be in the situation of Satchitananda. But he has forgotten that and is happy eating stool. And he thinks, this is wonderful, this is nice. But after some time, someone will catch that pig, kill him and sell the flesh. Then he will get another body. So in this way we are getting body after body after body. When I'm in a human body, I think that my dharma is to work hard, get money, and support my family. When I get the body of a mosquito, I think that my dharma is to find a human being who's working hard to support his family and drink the blood of that human being. In, the, in this way, in every life, we mistake what is our actual position. As we heard from both Gadadha Krishna Prabhu and from Goranga Prabhu, this human form of life is meant for uh, something better. In the human form of life, we can inquire into what is actually our Sanatan Dharma. An intelligent person should see that I want to be happy. But in this material world, there is no happiness. I don't want to die, but I have to die. This is the nature of the material world. Dukhalayam ashashvatam. Everything here is miserable and temporary. But we are meant, our natural position, that means our sanatan dharma, is to be eternal and blissful. So, real sanatan dharma, uh, with all due respect to Vishva Hindu Parishad, does not mean to join Vishva Hindu Parishad. But real sanatan dharma means to understand my eternal, blissful position. That is in the service of Krishna. Now you may say, well, why Krishna? There are so many gods in Hindu dharma. We have heard there are uh, 33 crores. And in the modern age, they're inventing new ones all the time. And then you may say, and then there's also Islam and Christianity and this and that and the other. But whatever we may think out in our limited consciousness, the, act, the supreme truth is one. Bhagavan is defined as Aishvaryasya Samagrasya Viryasya Yasha Shastriyaha Jnana Vairagya Yoshchaiva Shannang Bhaga Itingina. One who possesses all transcendental opulences. Bhagavan, Bhagavan means who possesses everything. That means the supreme controller. And he's all powerful. That means also he's the supreme controller. He's all famous, all beautiful, all knowledgeable, and fully uh, renounced from any uh, idea of material enjoyment. So, who is that person? The conclusion of Shastra is 
Krishna to Bhagavan Swayam. Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. And all the demigods are, they are also servants of Krishna. Yang Brahma, Varanendra, Rudra, Marutastan, Vanti, Divyai, Stivaya. All the demigods offer prayers to him. Uh, so, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh-huh. I may say, well, what about Allah and Jesus and this and that? Well, in one sense, you could say that Islam and Christianity, it's the same. But there's, there is difference also. You can't say it's all the, all the same in all respects. They also speak of God or Allah, but there's very limited knowledge of who actually God is. Of course, in Christianity, they claim Jesus to be God, but this is a mistake. Jesus himself never claimed to be God. So, uh, Sanatan Dharma means to uh, intelligently understand who is God, who is the Supreme, what is our relationship with Him, to act in that relationship, and thus to attain our eternal blissful position. It is not a matter of blind faith. Dharma, actual dharma can never be blind. Dharma is always accompanied by jnana, by knowledge. So this idea, you just believe blindly, this means it's not really dharma at all. In the uh, religious tradition in which I was raised in, I was told that you just have to believe. Asking questions and trying to understand was discouraged. But that's not dharma, because dharma is always accompanied by knowledge. Unless you understand what you're doing, you can't do it properly. That's true in any field. You see, the doctor, he could be trained, well, you just... This is how you give an injection. But he's not just trained how to do things, but he's trained in the, the understanding of how the body works. You can't train a doctor just mechanically, do this, do that. He has to understand the principles, otherwise he cannot properly act as a doctor. So in the same way, uh, dharma is a complex and subtle science. We have to understand how to act in every situation in a manner that is in accord with dharma. So it requires to understand the principles. Nowadays uh, we find that many Hindus are disturbed at rampant conversion of Hindus to Christianity. But no one would convert if actual spiritual education was given. There is no proper spiritual education. Now, this morning, uh, some of the children at the adjoining school, they came here and they chanted some shlokas from Bhagavad Gita. So, that is very good. We appreciated that. But they should understand the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. What's the use? Bhima Varam is famous for these educational institutions, but what's the use of teaching people dentistry and engineering unless they understand the purpose of life, unless there's teaching in the uh, understanding of the purpose of life as given in Bhagavad Gita, then all this education is useless, however proud of it you might be. And even whatever teaching is generally... Generally, no one gives any teaching in Bhagavad Gita. And even if they do, they mess it up because they don't understand what are the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, we are presenting Bhagavad Gita as it is. Generally, people take Bhagavad Gita, they quote some shlokas, and then they talk all nonsense. For instance, in what is called Hindu Dharma, they are under the misconception that all the gods are the same. But Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that that those people who worship the uh, other gods than myself to get some temporary material results, such people are foolish. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Yanti Deva Vrata Devan, 
Those who worship the demigods, they go to the planets of the demigods. Those who worship me, come to me. So how can you say that all the gods are the same and worship of all the gods gives the same result? This is not at all the teaching of Bhagavad Gita. It's quite opposite to the teaching of Bhagavad Gita. So you're teaching the children shlokas, but have no idea of what the actual teaching of Bhagavad Gita is. People don't want to take that teaching because they are karmais tais tai hrita jnana because their their intelligence is spoiled by material desires. People, uh, due to illusion, they think that indulging in material desires is desirable, especially in the modern materialistic society. They're advertising that. Uh, Indulgence in lust is very good. Just like you see all these uh, advertisements for the movies. They're advertisements to indulge the mind in lusty thought. This is not, this is sub-civilized. Civilized human beings do not uh, indulge in gross lust. We find, uh, Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita, Yehi sang sparsha jab hoga dukha yoniya evate adyanta vanta konte anateshu ramate buddha. Anyway, you can give the translation. Yeah, they, they, yeah, give the translation. The, the hap, the enjoyment which comes of, from indulging the senses, that is, actually produces misery, beginning, middle, and end. Therefore, an intelligent person does not take part in it. But everyone in the modern society is simply interested in sense enjoyment. Everyone is wasting their valuable human form of life watching TV. And TV simply promotes calm, krodha, and loba. Is it not? Yeah. And then moha. From calm, krodha, loba come moha, madha, matsarya. Translate it. From karma, from calm, cold, lobe, then naturally comes moha, madha, matsarya. So therefore, uh, people who, who take pleasure in these things, we can understand they're not intelligent. The people of Bhima Varam may think that they're very intelligent because they have so many prestigious educational institutions. But according to uh, the teaching of Bhagavad Gita, which means the actual fact, no one in this town is intelligent. Everyone is stupid. Because everyone is spoiling their human form of life. Instead of thinking how to get free from the cycle of birth and death, they're becoming more and more entangled in it by increasing their calm, crowd and loba by watching TV. Anyway, we have nothing, we're not blaming the people of Bhima Varam. It's not only you who are stupid, but everyone in the world is stupid. We're all stupid. Especially in Kali Yuga, people are very stupid. It is one of the prime characteristics of Kali Yuga. Fortunately, as we heard from both Gadadha Krishna and Goranga Prabhu, there is a, a special dispensation for Kali Yuga. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nas Jeva Nas Jeva Nas Jeva Gatiran Yatha. Forget, forgetting Sanatan Dharma, people think that my Dharma is to sit on a couch with my dog next to me and watch TV. The dog which should not be even allowed in the house is your best friend sitting next to you. What to do for such people? Chant Hare Krishna. Take up this chanting of Hare Krishna. That will raise us from the subhuman platform to the divine platform. That will raise us to our position, actual Sanatana Dharma, in the service of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Please chant this Hare Krishna mantra. Don't be victimized by this Rakshasa civilization. This town bears the holy name of Bhima. Bhima, he was uh, famous for killing so many Rakshasas. So if Bhima came to this town today, what would he do? Would he kill all the people for being Rakshasas? No, he wouldn't kill anyone. 
the people, people today, they're insignificant Rakshasas. Their position is pitiable. Bhima has come in this Kali Yuga as Sri Madhva Muni. And in the same Vaishnav Sampradaya uh, is coming this Iskon Hare Krishna movement. So uh, we request the people of this town to follow the good example of Bhima, of being devotees of Krishna. Chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, understand the teachings of Bhagavad Gita as well, and come to your eternal position in the service of Krishna. Thank you so much for patiently hearing me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hmm? Yeah, and tell about the books also. You're going to tell about the books? Yeah, are there any questions, please? That's true. But what is the meaning of sannyas? That you should understand from Bhagavad Gita. Anashita karma palang karyang karma karoti yaha sasanya sicha yogi cha nanirag nirna chakriyaha. You give the translation. One who performs his uh, prescribed work uh, and who is not attached to the results of his work. Such a person, Krishna says, is a sannyasi and a yogi. Not one who artificially renounces the world. So sannyas means to uh, completely, to be completely detached. That does not necessarily mean one has to formally renounce the world. If you think that by reading Bhagavad Gita you must become a formal sannyasi, that means you don't understand anything at all about Bhagavad Gita. Because Arjuna's proposal was to leave his duties. But Krishna, by speaking Bhagavad Gita, convinced Arjuna to perform them. Krishna, after speaking Bhagavad Gita, didn't tell Arjuna, now you become a sannyasi. Now you, you leave everything. But he convinced him, you go on as a grihasta and perform your duty. Mamanusmira. Krishna told Arjuna, Mamanusmira yudhyacha. Think of me and fight. Who asked that question? Yeah. So, you chant Hare Krishna and go on with what you're doing. And study Bhagavad Gita as it is. Well, that again uh, is stated in Bhagavad Gita by Krishna to Arjuna. Bhaktosi me sakha chaiti rahasyam hiyatadu tamam. Krishna said, I am not, I'm speaking this to you because you are my devotee and my friend, and speaking this great mystery to you. So, I, of course, Yudhishthira was also a devotee, but Arjuna was uh, in the relationship of being a friend of Krishna, whereas Yudhishthira was uh, respected by Krishna. Of course, Krishna is to be respected by everyone, but in his Leela, he acts respectfully toward his elders. So, because there's a very close relationship between Krishna and Arjuna, the communication could go on very nicely. Why not Yudhishthira? Why not Vyasadi? Why not some Rishi or Brahmana? Because Arjuna was very dear to Krishna, therefore he was the uh, proper recipient for this no, no, no. knowledge. There's a question now. All these questions about sannyas. Translate. But none of you are going to take sannyas, so why even bother talking about it? You're all completely attached to your material situation. Yeah. Uh, practically, it's a rehash of the same question that was just asked. Krishna says, Bhaktya mama bijana ti. I can be understood by bhakti. He didn't say that you have to take sannyas. Nor did he encourage Arjuna to take sannyas. You please chant the holy names of Krishna. I, uh, from, from all the Vedic literature, we understand that someone who is a devotee of Krishna and chants the holy name of Krishna, even if that person is a grihasta, they are much better spiritually situated than a renowned sannyasi who has no Bhakti. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what our material situation is. Sannyas is also a material situation, in as much as it is an institution within this material world. There's no sannyas in the spiritual world. So, uh, 
Yang yang vapi swam bhavam tyajante kalevarang tang tangwe vaiti kauntaya sadatad bhava bhavitaha. Our next life or an is determined by the consciousness we develop in this life. So generally it's thought that a sannyasi will be in better consciousness. But even if a sannyasi is very learned in Shastra, very uh, detached from sense enjoyment, if they have no bhakti toward Krishna, it's all useless. So anyway, like I say, uh, I don't, you know, who's fit for say? People who are just going on with their material life, you just can't suddenly become a sannyasi. So don't even bother thinking about it. This chanting of Hare Krishna is practical. You can take it up in whatever situation you are in. It is not practical for you to take sannyas. Even if you tried, you couldn't do it properly. So just forget all this talk about sannyas and chant Hare Krishna. That is practical and effective. That will give you a tremendous spiritual progress. That is therefore recommended in Shastra. What is the difference between Swadharma and Paradharma? Actually, they are the same. Dharma means the intrinsic characteristic. In this world, what is called Swadharma, that means according to the body. And therefore, someone is classified as Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, Brahmachari, Grihastha, Dhanaprastha or Sannyasi. And one is enjoined to act according to his Swadharma. A grihastha has to act according to the rules of Grihastha life. A Brahmana has to act as a Brahmana. A Kshatriya has to act as a Kshatriya. So this is called Swadharma. And Parodharma, well actually this word has two meanings. One is the higher dharma. Pa- para in the sense of higher. So the higher dharma is the real Swadharma, that is the Atma Dharma. And on the material platform, Paro Dharma means the Dharma which is meant for someone else. So in Bhagavad Gita, we find that Arjuna, he did not want to fight. But his Swadharma as a Kshatriya was to fight. Uh, for a Kshatriya, the Dharma of a Brahmana, Vaishya or Shudra is Parodharma. It means the Dharma enjoined for someone else. For a Brahmana, Parodharma means the Kshatriya Dharma, Vaishya Dharma or Shudra Dharma. But all these, actually, all of these is all Parodharma for the soul because the Atma is not Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya or Shudra. In the modern age, everything is a mess. There is no proper Vanashram Dharma. Kalo Shudra Sambhava. In Kali Yuga, everyone is born a Shudra. But uh, someone should take the role of spiritual leadership. Our spiritual master, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, has uh, conferred on persons like myself the status of Brahmana, Sannyasi, like this. We are coming... Yeah, well, you can clap, yes. We are coming by birth, we are from Mlecha Jati. What does Mlecha mean? Generally, that Mlecha is considered someone outside of India or someone outside of Hindu Dharma. The, the original meaning of the word Mlecha means someone who does not know Sanskrit. So, um, by that understanding, almost all the Hindus are also Mlechas. So, uh, those who are supposed to be, those who are traditionally Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, Shudras, they're not uh, able to, in the modern society, they're not able to discharge their functions properly. The Brahmanas, they're become, you know, they're all becoming, well, they're also Shudras mostly because they're taking jobs. People born in Brahmin families, they're mostly taking jobs, they're paid which means they're becoming Shudras. There cannot be any proper Kshatriyas in in a democratic society. So if there are no proper Brahmanas or Kshatriyas, then there can't be proper Vaishyas or Shudras either. But society needs spiritual leadership. And seeing the lack of that and the need for spiritual leadership, our spiritual master conferred 
the status of brahmanas on people who are otherwise unqualified and disqualified. The qualities of a brahmana are described in Bhagavad Gita. Okay, so say the shlok. You should know that one. Shamodama. Shamodapattapashocham kshantir arjavam evacha jnanam vigyanam astikyam brahma karma svabhavajam. Okay, give the translation. Shama means sense control. Shama dhamma means mind and sense control. Tapasya, shocha, kshanti, arjavam. Arjava means straightforwardness. Kapti nahi. Then jnana, which means not getting a degree at the college, but it means uh, knowledge of shastra. And, and vigyana means realization. So, uh, myself and others are being trained in these qualities to give spiritual guidance to human society. Actually, the Indian people should give spiritual guidance to the whole world. But instead of giving spiritual guidance to the world, they are imitating the lecture civilization of the West. Is India benefited by Mickey Mouse? Are the people of India benefited by wearing pants and shirts instead of... We used to see... I came here 20 years ago. At that time... Most of the men were wearing vesti and khadi cloth. Now you won't, I, you, hardly you'll see anyone. They're all wearing polyester pants and shirts. What is the benefit? See, the, the cotton is very cool, which is suitable for this climate. But this polyester pant and shirt is, is very, it makes you perspire. And that cotton cloth is washed every day. I don't know how often you're washing this. I think people put the same pants on every day. It's absolutely unclean. So what is the benefit? Why do you think that you are becoming more civilized by wearing pants and shirts? It's just blind following with no benefit whatsoever. Because Indian people, are they've been taught by the Westerners to be ashamed of their culture. But I come from the country where drinking alcohol eating meat, having illicit sex, these are considered normal activities. I was raised in that so-called civilization. By the grace of Krishna, in my youth, I I thought this was disgusting. And I was fortunate to uh, be taught the message of Bhagavad Gita by Srila Prabhupada. And I came to this land knowing this to be the land of Krishna and Rama and Bhima where the people of this land are supposed to be following this culture and teaching it to the world. But instead, they've invited Mickey Mouse. They're so ashamed of this glorious culture that they think they have to dress like Westerners. And they're so shameless that they go to movies which are not fit for human beings. Absolutely subcultural. So take up this Krishna conscious movement and become genuine human beings, genuine Indians, benefit yourself and benefit the world. Don't spoil your human form of life. I'm going to answer this one, it's a common question. Yeah, so you can answer. Shall we take, shall we take, we'll take one question at a time. So you are, this is a common question, so you can answer that. Well, in some, there are different recensions of Kali Santra and Upanishad. Generally it's given as Hari Rama, but there are also recensions with Hari Krishna. First. Then second question is, yeah, okay. Hari Krishna. Actually this clapping is also imported from Western culture. In Shastra we find there is Sadhuva, then people they will say sadhu, sadhu. So thank you for the appreciation. But if you like, you can say sadhu, sadhu. Yeah, another question. Manava saver is madhava saver. There's nowhere in Shastra. About is manava saver is madhava saver. Which Shastra is this in? Is this in any Shastra? Which Shastra is this from? Which Shastra is this from? No, but which Shastra? Shastra. 
Which Shastra? Can you, can you quote any from Gita, Mahabharata, Ramayana, Veda, Puranas, where this is said? No, no, but some books, some books, so anyone can write a book, but what is Shastra that we have to accept? You see, even the animals, they help each other. The mother dog feeds the baby dogs. So helping human society is not a spiritual function, it's an animal function. So that's why I'm asking, where is in Shastra this state of building schools and hospitals? That's, that's not the same as worshipping Madhava. One is a materialistic function, the other is a function of, uh, of the Atma. Yeah, this question is based on a misunderstanding, as far as I can understand. There is a, there is a common misconception that Paramatma is uh, some impersonal force and which becomes personified. It's a very common misconception which Krishna addresses in Bhagavad Gita. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Avyaktam vyaktim apanam manyante mama buddhayaha. Those who think that me, the person, me, Krishna, have come from the unmanifest, from the avyakta. Krishna says, people who think like that, they are abuddhayaha. Means there's lack intelligence. So the idea that Rama and Krishna are both avatars of the same Paramatma, well, in one sense that's true, but you have to understand the, the properly. Say it in the mic, so we can all... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Really, really? It started there? Where's the tradition? Going back 5,000 years of this. This idea, for your information, was introduced by one Swami who was called Vivekananda. It's not an ancient concept. He introduced the idea of Daridra Narayana. The poor man is Narayana. Yeah, the, the poor man. Is. Although Narayana means Lakshmi Pati. So he, so he got his idea.